Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 7. In this video we're going to learn about linear equations with no solution or an infinite number of solutions. Alright, so so far we have only worked with one type of equation. This equation is known as a conditional equation. Let me highlight that, a conditional equation. So it is true only under certain conditions. So let's see an example. So here's a very simple example of a conditional equation. Everything we've worked with so far has been a conditional equation. So negative 2x equals 4. So we all know how to solve this at this point, right? We want to isolate x, so we divide both sides of the equation by negative 2, right? The coefficient of x. This cancels with this and becomes 1. So I have x equals 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So that's my solution. Now, the reason it's called a conditional equation is because this equation is true under this specific condition, that x is equal to negative 2. If I plug in a negative 2 for x, I would have negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. And then this left side simplifies to 4. So 4 equals 4. So that all checks out. Now, if I choose anything else for x, this is no longer a true statement. If I was to say, if I was to say, x is equal to 7, for example. Well, negative 2 times 7 is not equal to 4. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. That's not equal to 4. This is wrong. Wrong. Okay? Only if I use x equals negative 2 will this equation be true. All right. So the next type of equation is known as an identity. Okay? An identity. An identity is always true. Okay, no matter what we replace our variable with. So we can replace it with a billion, negative 2, 4, 27, negative 1 fourth. It does not matter. It will always be true. The key thing is that an identity has an infinite number of solutions. So here's an example of an identity. So we have 3x minus 12 equals 3 times the quantity x minus 4. And before we go through and show why this is an identity, just in your head, pick any number you want. Doesn't matter what it is, and plug it in for x, and I bet it works. I'm going to pick the number, I don't know, negative 8. So I'm going to plug in a negative 8 here and a negative 8 here. And let's see if we get a true statement. So 3 times negative 8 is negative 24 minus 12 equals 3 times the quantity, negative 8 minus 4. So negative 8 minus 4. And negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. So I would have 3 times negative 12 on the right. So this is negative 36. Over here, negative 24 minus 12 is negative 36 also. And you might say, okay, well, you solved that already. You knew that x was equal to negative 8. Pick anything else. Let's pick 4, for example. Let's pick 4 and see what happens. So I'll plug in a 4 here, and I'll plug in a 4 here. So 3 times 4 is 12 over here minus 12. Over here I'll have 3 times the quantity, 4 minus 4, which is 0. So 3 times 0 is 0. Over here 12 minus 12 is 0. 0 equals 0. So that's a true statement. Let's try one more. So now let's try, I don't know, negative 3. Negative 3. So 3 times negative 3 minus 12 is equal to 3 times the quantity negative 3 minus 4. So over here 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 12 is negative 21. Over here, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. So again, 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 I get the left and the right side is the same value. So how can that be the case? Well, the trick to this identity is, if you haven't noticed it already, the left and the right side are the exact same thing. They're just in different forms. This over here is just a simplified version of this over here. If I use my distributive property on the right side, so the left would still be 3x minus 12, 3 times x is 3x, and then minus 3 times 4, that's 12. So I have the exact same thing on both sides of the equation. So of course, whatever I plug in here and here, I'm going to get the same value, right? Because I'm doing the exact same thing. If I plug in a 2 here and I plug in a 2 here, in each case, I'm multiplying 3 by 2, and then I'm subtracting away 12 on both sides. So it doesn't matter what number I pick. 
I do the exact same thing to it. And so the left and the right side will always be equal. And so there's an infinite number of solutions because I can choose any number that I want, right? It's literally unlimited as far as how many solutions you would have. So if you were to come across this in your textbook or your teacher gives it to you for homework or a test, just write that the solution is all real numbers. And as we move throughout algebra, we're gonna see some different notation that we're gonna to use to say, hey, all real numbers. But right now we're just gonna write it out. Okay, we're not ready for the notation yet. So we're just gonna write all real numbers. That's your solution. All right, so lastly, we see equations with no solution. These equations are known as contradictions. So contradictions. So no matter what you choose for n, it's never gonna work. And to see why, let's, let's simplify the right-hand side of the equation. So negative two equals, we have two, we have negative six times n, that's negative six n. Then we have negative six times negative n, that's positive six n. So what you're gonna see is that if I simplify the right-hand side here, the variable n is gonna go away completely. Negative six n plus six n, those are opposites. Those are gone. So what I'm left with is just nonsensical statement that negative two equals two. Well, it doesn't, this is wrong. Negative two doesn't equal two. So nothing is ever gonna work here, right? No matter what you do. Because if I put something in for n, I'm just gonna subtract it away. So the result of this would be zero, right? I plug something in for n, I subtract that same number away, I get zero. I multiply six times zero, I get zero. So I'm just left with negative two equals two, right? Once I simplify, this is what I'm gonna have, no matter what I choose for n. Negative two equals two. So there's no value of n that can ever be chosen that will make this a true statement. And so this is an example of a contradiction. And so when this occurs, you can put no solution. And again, we'll have some fancy notation for that moving forward, but for right now, just put no solution. Hey, there's, there's nothing I can do here. So let's look at some examples and let's see if we can figure out through simplification what type of equation they are. So this one, I have 63 minus 55n equals negative 11 times this quantity 5n minus 11. So on the left, 63 minus 55n. On the right, I'm gonna use my distributive property to remove the parentheses. So negative 11 times 5n, that's negative 55n. And then I'll have negative 11 times negative 11, that's positive 121. I told you this in one of the videos I made in a previous lesson or practice that I can't remember which one. If you have the exact same number on two sides of the equation, you can get rid of it. In other words, I have negative 55n here, I have negative 55n here, I can just get rid of it. Why is that the case? Well, through the addition property of equality, I can legally make it disappear. If I add 55n here, and I add 55n here, I've added the same number to both sides of the equation. In both cases, it's gone. It sums to zero. And I'm left with 63 equals 121, which again is nonsense. This is nonsense, okay, in case you don't know. So there's no solution here no solution. This is another example of a contradiction, right? If you end up with your variable disappearing and you get, you know, one side doesn't equal the other, you have a contradiction. There's not a solution, right? So this is nonsense. All right, let's take a look at this one. We have negative six times the quantity negative seven plus X is equal to negative six times the quantity X minus seven. So again, let's simplify. Negative six times negative seven is 42. Negative six times x is negative six x, so minus six x. Over here, negative six times x is negative six x. Over here, negative six times negative seven is plus 42. Now, if I look closely, I can see that these are the same, right? This is an identity. And so upon first glance, and I'm looking at this equation up here, it looks like a regular equation. But once you simplify it and kind of really pay attention, I can reorder this to negative 6x plus 42. And it's the exact same thing as over here, negative 6x plus 42. So whatever value I choose for x, doesn't matter what it is, I plug it in, I multiply by negative 6, and I add 42 to it. The same thing's gonna happen on both sides of the equation, 
And so I can pick whatever I want for X and it'll be a solution. So this would be all real numbers. Again, this is an identity. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have negative four minus nine times the quantity X minus six. This is equal to negative three times the quantity three X plus five and then plus two. Again, I'm gonna simplify each side of the equation. I'm gonna to look to see what type of equation I have. So negative four, I have negative nine times X, that's negative nine X or minus nine X. Negative nine times negative six is plus 54. This is equal to, here I have negative three times three X, that's negative nine X. Then I have negative three times five, that's minus 15 and then plus two. Now, again, 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 I've told you that if you have the same number on both sides of the equation, you can get rid of it. So I have negative nine X here. I have negative nine X here. I can cancel them out. Again, if I added nine X to both sides of the equation, this is gone. So what am I left with? On the left, negative four plus 54 is 50. On the right, negative 15 plus two is negative 13. Again, 50 equals negative 13, that's nonsense nonsense okay does not work so this has no solution another example of a contradiction and again if you look at this equation to start it looks like a normal equation something we would have gotten in previous lessons right something you would just crank out you're going to get these on a test usually at the end of the section on linear equations in one variable your teacher is going to throw this at you and expect you to have forgotten about these type of equations. And then you end up trying to solve it and you just, why is the variable gone? Well, 50 equals negative 13, that doesn't make any sense. So just remember, if the variable is gone and one side doesn't equal the other, there's no solution, right? It's a contradiction. All right, let's take a look at another example. So we have nine times the quantity X minus six equals nine X minus 54. So if I use my distributive property, nine times X is nine X minus nine times six, that's 54. So I have the same thing on the left and the right, nine X minus 54. This is an identity, right? I can pick anything for X and it works. So all real numbers, all real numbers would be my solution here. And again, this type of equation is known as an identity. 